Between the last video and this video, I've gone ahead and baked an ambient occlusion or AO map. I recommend you baking out any support maps you need for the texturing process at this stage. The last thing we'll do before texturing is some performance optimizations. If we press Shift Alt Q, we can open the lighting panel. I recommend turning off all the EV effects, which is AO Bloom and screen space reflections as you make calculation much longer. We'll then come and click on this icon, which will unplug the normal data. We don't need to see the normal and bump when just working on roughness and color, but at a later stage, we'll come back and turn this on. The last thing is turn on the isolation modes. We currently can't select anything as we don't have any layers and any channels on those layers. Now we can begin texturing. We'll create a folder for each of the three different model parts. One for the cassette player, one for the cassette player glass, and one for the cassette itself. We'll then hide the cassette as we don't want to see it as we're texturing and we don't want it to be calculated. We'll work on it individually. And when we're working on it, we'll then hide this other geometry. Let's talk about how to add regular layers into a folder layer. These four layer types can be put into folders and to do so, you'll first need to create one. If the layer is above, you'll need to have the folder open. When the folder arrow points down, it means it's open. If it points to the right, it means it's closed. If I press down and the folder is closed, the layer will move below it. And if I press up, it'll move above it. But if the folder is open and I press down, it'll move into the folder. And if I press up, it'll move into the folder as well. Let's load a material onto this layer. The material library configured in the first chapter is now available. I'll pick this dark plastic and remove the normal data. Before I click load material, you'll notice that I have an RGB and two value sliders. You can choose to use that instead of image textures, but for a specific layer, we'll use image textures. When I click load material, you'll notice that all the maps are mapped to their respective channels. I can then close the material libraries tab. If I want to add a channel, I can expand this panel and select which channel I'd like to add. If I want to mute a channel, I can click on this X. The difference between muting and adding a channel is muting will keep the channel but not show it. When I remove the channel, it'll be gone completely. Next thing I'll do is I'll add a texture layer. For this texture layer, I'll navigate to where our materials are and select this orange color. I'll click open. How a texture layer works is it allows you to create the detail for the other channels using this main image. So I have one main image. I can add filters to alter the base color data and say add a color ramp to get textural detail out of the roughness channel. Let's actually do that. I'll click on color ramp and then I'll need to ed exit the isolation mode so I can enter this channel isolation mode. If I then pull this together, I'll be able to crush the detail. I'll do the same thing for the bump channel. I'll first add the color ramp filter and then I'll isolate it. I'll set this to ease. You'll notice that now the object is really shiny and to change that, we'll come back in here. We don't want that much reflectivity. I'll then come and close this and close this as well. For the base color channel, what we'll do is we'll click on add filter and we'll add a color remap. How the color remap works is it'll take both the saturation and the value, value being the black to white data of the image and saturation being how vibrant the color is. I'll then click on this, come to the hex value and set the color to C4, C2, BD and press enter. You'll notice that the color we see here and here are very different. This is much more saturated 
and that's because what it's doing is it's taking the hue of this value which would be 0.118 but taking the saturation and value from the original image to get the color that we want we'll pull down the saturation and set it to about 0.25 we can then close this and close the base color again i'd like to view the normal data just to edit it a bit and for that i'll click on this icon we can see that the normal data is quite harsh and we don't want it to be this strong so what we'll do is click on this eye icon and set the value to about 10. It seems a bit more manageable, but it's still quite strong. So we'll reduce it again to five. You can actually choose to slide this and not type in a value. Five looks good for this layer. We'll do the same for the first layer. It's also quite strong. So what we'll do is click on the layer, close this other panels, set this to about five as well. This looks nice. We'll then turn this layer back on. And what we'll notice is that the color is covering the entire layer below it. And we don't want that. We want to mask out certain parts. So what we'll do is click on the layer, go back to the masks tab and click add ID map. Once that loads, you'll notice that we're seeing the layer below it and that's because all the color from this layer has been hidden. If we click pick ID map color, we can then select we want this to be masked out. You'll now notice that the gray and the beige part are different, but we'd also like to mask out this front part. So what we'll do is we'll add another ID map. Click on the color picker and select this section. We'll add the threshold to about 0.05, copy the value, and paste it to the one below. ID maps can tend to be expensive as they are generators, and for that case, we'll come and we'll bake out this into a black and white image texture. If I press A to select all the objects, but first I'll need to make the cassette available. Then press A to select all the objects, set my margin to 2, rename the image, and click on Bake Masks. I can then close this panel, delete all the masks, add an image texture mask, and load in the mask we just baked. If we then go back into the material preview mode, you'll notice that the same sections are baked, but it's a lot more responsive. Before going on to the next step, I'd just like to reiterate why we bake down the generators. Generators tend to be procedural, which means you can change them whenever, but procedural masks also tend to not be that realistic, and they're also heavy on the CPU. We'd like to have a performant viewport, but if you don't mind the extra computation, feel free to stay with procedural generators the whole way through. Before we continue to texture, we forgot to go back to our isolation mode. We can easily isolate by pressing Alt F2 to cycle to the right and Alt F1 to cycle back to the left. We'll also turn off our normal data and though we won't see any change currently, as we're in isolation mode, it'll help us later. We can then go on to the next layer type, which is a filter layer, and click on it. How the filter layer works is it can only get filter data. Let's add a hue, saturation, and value node. We'll then pull down the value and maybe set it to a value of 0.3. We'll then come to the masks tab as we just want to isolate this speaker area, add an ID map and select the color picker. We can then pick this area. You'll notice that only the front part is dark now. I'll press one to take us into the orthographic view and zoom into this area. 
I'll close this masks panel and add a blank image texture mask. In any image texture node, we have the plus icon, which allows you to add a new image. And we have this button next to it, which allows you to access textures in your library. What we'll do is we'll click on this and select this mask. We can then click OK. If we zoom out, you'll notice that we have black on different spots and that's not what we want. We'll move this layer below the ID map and change the ID map from add to multiply. You'll then notice that the mask only shows up on this area. And what we'll do then is we'll change the mapping to object. We'll set the scale to about 50 so that we can have repetition. Then we'll zoom in so we can see where it's overlapping and just pull these values a bit to set it in place. We still haven't covered the user control layer type, but before we do that, let's add one more piece of textural detail to this filter layer. For that, we'll go back to the main layer settings, expand base color, and add a mixed RGB filter. We'll then click on add second input image. If we click on the plus, we'll be able to add an image. Let's rename it and click OK. I can then click on this icon to take me into texture paint mode. And you'll notice that we have this panel. This brush panel is the same as pressing Shift, Alt and W. I just prefer to use a shortcut instead of this. We'll go to the front orthographic view and zoom in. Select the, select the octagon alpha. Scale up your brush a bit. And stamp the detail. We'll then leave texture paint mode and you'll notice that the detail is white which is not what we want. We want it to be a bit darker than this other circles. What we'll do is we'll set this to subtract and set the factor to a value of 0.05. You notice it's a bit darker but not too dark. We also want to see what the normal detail is doing and for that we'll need to exit the isolation mode. We'll first turn on the normal data and then exit. You'll notice that the data is actually being pushed out and not going in. We'll come and change the blend mode to subtract. Now the speaker looks a bit better, but let's make this color a bit darker. So we'll come back in here and bump it up slightly to 0.075. This looks a lot better now. Let's now talk about the final layer type, which is a user controlled layer. I'll go back into an isolation mode by pressing Alt and F2. I'll turn off the normal data as well. If I then click on this icon, we'll get a user controlled layer. I only want the base color for this example, so I'll open the channels tab, remove roughness and remove bump. I'll then click on Open Node Editor, press Shift A, and search for Group Input Node. Anything that I plug into here will be exposed to me in the panel. For this example, we'll add a color, mix RGB, and plug in the first color to that, and then plug this out. We can then delete this node. If I then close this panel, you'll notice I have this field. I can change the color and it will be updated in the viewport accordingly. For this project, we won't be using a user control layer, so let's delete it. When we initially created the folder layers, we deliberately skipped a detail because it wasn't relevant at the time. But now that we have detail within the layers inside the folder, we can talk about it. Ravage allows for you to promote certain properties so that you can close a folder and still be able to edit the layers within the folder. 
I can do it for an image tax you know by right clicking and selecting promote property. If I then click on the folder layer, I'll see this image texture node. I can choose to demote the property by right clicking and removing it. Before we get into the texture paint section, we'll edit the material to a level that we like. The rest of this video is going to be me doing that and I recommend you take some time to do the same thing on your end. <laughs> 